good morning, thank you. I am pleased to welcome you on behalf of the Heinz Endowments. The endowment's commitment to equity means that we're on a journey to walk the talk, to reflect the values that we espouse about what it means to be committed to elevating opportunity for all and to work to eradicate policies and practices that inhibit the full participation of members of our community. Today is a starting point. To be totally transparent, it's clear to me that we serve people with all types of disabilities, but in many instances, we just aren't doing it very well. When reflecting on today's agenda, my friend Joni Schweiger reminded me that the number one disability in the world is depression. We acknowledge this. And in truth, we have been more intentional about addressing invisible disabilities than those that are physical or developmental. For many years, for example, we have, part, we have targeted postpartum depression as part of our maternal and child health work. We've also prioritized the intersection of disability and criminal justice in our reform agenda. Is there more that can be done on all fronts Absolutely, and we hope to move forward today as an important step. I have watched my adult son and his family navigate the numerous challenges of recovery from a serious accident for most of this year. He said to me recently about his months in a wheelchair, it was though I was suddenly invisible. And this is a young man who's well-educated and fairly well-resourced, but it was a struggle. It was a struggle and continues to be a struggle, both emotionally as well as physically. Intentional inclusion means considering how people function in the context in which they live, including addressing barriers that inhibit or promote opportunities that allow people to participate and give them the same opportunity to be healthy and prosperous on their terms in that context so that they, like everyone else, can dream, explore, and aspire to reach their potential. We are delighted to partner with FISA in this work and draw on their long history of prioritizing people with disabilities. While I have learned much, I recognize that there continues to be much I don't know. It's been a blessing to work with the planning committee and I wanna thank them for readily giving their time and expertise to help this be the best possible convening. Christy Troutman, who you will hear in a moment, Shani Layson, Josie Badger, Holly Dick, Vanessa Braun, Susie Chase, Mary Hartley, Michelle McMurray, Tiffany Wilhelm, Sue Cardello. And I'm supposed to remind you what that means, that my time is almost up. <laughs> Deanna Con Conesny, Scott Wallace, and my colleagues Donna Evans, Sebastian, and Carmen Lee. Thank you. We believe we all have a role to play. In reality, there's very little we can accomplish alone. During this season of thanks, thank you for joining us. We come today with varying experiences, including some who are deeply affected, some who are highly trained experts, and some of us with limited experience, but a willingness to learn. Today is not about a new agenda. It's about doing what we are already doing but doing it better with respect and gaining a deeper understanding about how each of us can work towards a thriving region. Thank you and please welcome Christy Troutman, Executive Director of the FISA Foundation. Thank you so much, Carmen. FISA is delighted to be partnering with the Heinz Endowments and thrilled to welcome you all here today. FISA's mission is to build a culture of respect and improve the lives of women, girls, and people with disabilities. Part of my role for the past 15 years has been to advocate with and for people with disabilities. Over and over again, I've witnessed the fact that disability is often left out, forgotten about, even when the conversation focuses on diversity. I don't believe that this pattern is about any personal intention to discriminate 
It is the result of a long history of how our country has treated people with disabilities as broken, damaged, without value, and a burden on society. We carry unexamined remnants of long accepted practices of shutting people with disabilities away, of segregation, of special places or institutions for keeping people with disabilities out of sight, behind walls, and sometimes literally in cages and restraints. So when we forget to think about people with disabilities, it's not by accident. We're continuing to live out the history of exclusion today. But the reality is that disability is a common part of human experience. Disability includes physical disabilities, difficulty hearing and seeing, sometimes difficulty communicating. The reality is that most disabilities are not readily apparent, at least at first glance. Things like learning disabilities, depression, PTSD, brain injury, autism, intellectual disabilities. Nearly 20% of Americans have a disability and most of us will experience some form of disability in our lives, at least temporarily. People with disabilities are part of every community, every racial and ethnic group, every age, and every gender. People with disabilities are among our clients, our volunteers, our staff, and our donors. Issues like community development, clean air and water, employment, housing, transportation, education, healthcare, and criminal justice reform are also disability justice issues. So recognizing and removing barriers and being more intentional about including people with disabilities isn't about starting new. It is about being more effective, fairer, and more just in the work that we are already doing. Which brings us to today's agenda. You have programs in front of you. There are braille and large print programs available at registration. If you'd prefer an electronic copy, you can find it at disabilityinclusionpgh.org. Shortly, you'll be hearing from Darren Walker, president of Ford Foundation, a globally focused foundation guided by a vision of social justice. Darren will engage in conversation with Grant Oliphant, president of the Heinz Endowments, about philanthropy's role in promoting disability inclusion. Paulo Hanlon will share more about the disability civil rights movement, adding important context to the conversation. We'll also hear a variety of short talks from local leaders, including a story of how Pittsburgh's arts community has become a national model for inclusion. After lunch, we'll be joined by Jennifer Mizrahi, president of Respectability, who will present some recent research about how foundations and nonprofits are missing the mark about some very basic disability barriers. And we'll spend the balance of the afternoon discussing next steps, including funding available to support inclusion. Now, I'd like to introduce you to our MCs for today's program. Josie Badger earned her doctorate in healthcare ethics from Duquesne University and is a widely recognized consultant on disability rights. She is a published author, serves on the boards of United Way and FISA Foundation, yes, and is a recipient of the Athena Young Professional Award. Chaz Kellum has a master's degree in organizational leadership from Robert Morris University. He is currently the director of Pitt's Student Engagement Office and previously managed diversity efforts at the Pittsburgh Pirates and YWCA. Chaz serves on the boards of Coro and Visit Pittsburgh. Chaz and Josie, take it away. Thank you. Morning. Good morning, everyone. All right, come on. Let's get some more energy going. Good morning. Good morning. It's a good-looking crowd out there. I see some good-looking group. Good-looking group. Um, I just want to start off by simply just taking a moment to pause and thank all of you for coming today. This is a remarkable uh, opportunity to have some discussion, sh share some insightful information, and really continue a much needed conversation, not only for Pittsburgh, but for our country overall, and really to help elevate a population that I'm proud to represent and proud to be part of my identity. Uh, and we're very, very thankful to be here with you this morning, and we're excited that you all have chosen to come today to talk about this very important topic. 
So thank you guys again for coming. Um, we were just saying how excited we were that we don't know all of you guys. Um, because normally, we're talking to all of our friends and people we consider family. And so it is wonderful to hopefully now build a larger family of disability rights supporters. And we are so excited to be here. We are here as not only your comic relief, but also to <laughs> share some basic info about disability and we have the wonderful privilege of introducing some videos and um, some of our speakers today. So we wanted to give you all sort of an overview of Disability 101, which that means I, in the next five and a half minutes, I have to talk to you about the largest minority group in the world. So let's see how well we can do that. So um, we are proud, as Chad said, to be members of the disability community. We are a community and a culture that is across every age group, across different ethnicities, across religions, and often our culture is not shared by our family members. And that makes us a little bit different. And you all are welcome to join our community at any point in your life. So, you know, that's one of the few communities you can just jump right into. Um, so, we are excited because whether you know it or not, you are serving people with disabilities. Every, there are one in four people have a disability. So, more likely than not, you are working with people with disabilities and you don't maybe see it. Like was mentioned, most are invisible. However, we know that a lot of people have intersectionality where we're dealing with a difference of maybe multiple diversity groups plus disabilities. So there's a good chance that we are going to need some sort of support and not always just the obvious disability support. I want to talk about changing the complexity of the conversation around disability. People with disabilities are assets, folks. We have a lot to give. Yeah. We are a community that has passions, talents, that enhance and build up communities, corporations, and institutions all across the country. Mm -hmm. We are people that can help complex uh, problems and figure out creative solutions. What I love about being a member of this community is that we are very creative. Mm -hmm. We have to be creative in all aspects of our lives, and that alone can be an asset to your company. Folks, at the end of the day, we're people. We want you to think about people first language, you know, and that really makes a difference. You know, I am an individual first, and I have lots of identities, one of which is and has, uh, has a disability. I want us to also think about the complexity of disability, as Christy mentioned. This is not a one-size-fits-all, right? Josie and I are two individuals in a large community, and we are very different. So again, this is not something where one-size-fits-all. We want to be we want to be creative on how we approach uh, conversations, opportunities, and discussions around disability. And today, we're going to try to provide some information about that. If everybody can open your program for me really quickly, um, I believe it's maybe the third page. There are some basics that we wanted to share with you there. Uh, there's some information, which I'm not going to necessarily ask you to read right now, but there is some information in that we thought was important for you to leave today with as a, as a takeaway. On the next page, you'll, you'll find some very helpful statistics that we also wanted to bring your attention to, because again, we cannot talk about the future without thinking about the, the data that supports this concept. So we want to make your lives easier. This conference is not about one more thing that you have to do with your limited budgets. It's not about one more population to serve. It's about serving the people that you are working with better. And we are here to equip you with that knowledge and support to do so. Over the past hundred years, in most of at least America, we have been moving from the medical model to the social model of disability, recognizing that we are not innately broken. We are not wrong, 
but our barriers are a combination of who we are and how society was not built for us. And so we are here today to help you figure out how you can better serve our community and do what you're already doing better. So we want to um, encourage you to interact with the people in this room. We want to encourage you to follow up. It's like God is descending. It's like, it's like time to get off the stage, Jazz and Jesse. Um, but we want you to use your time wisely. You have experts everywhere. Today, folks, is about you. We want you to leave here inspired and empowered to take this information that you gain and take it back to whatever institutions or home you may call and make that place better. Actions, being advocates for this community, and really doing this together, okay? Pittsburgh is a small town, small community, but it is filled with resources and opportunity, and together we can change the conversation and our environment to include people with disabilities.